Okay. All photographs are copyrighted by Brent Spiner and Gates McFadden and may not be used for any unauthorized purposes, especially on Facebook. We're going to stand. Yeah. I, I, if you don't mind. Is that okay? Is that all right? Yeah. And then we're going to lie down. But yeah. I'll go first. Yeah. No, no. All right. So, hi, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Um, thank you very much for uh, coming to see, uh, see us. This is awesome. Even in this 95 degree weather, which is not so awesome, but you know. This is the best time I've ever had. <laughs> uh, okay, that was the best time <laughs> I've ever had. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, is Zombie Girl here? But, no, they are. At Here's the thing, there's a few people who are in the bathroom because there's like a bunch oh, of Oh, there's a, uh, yeah. yeah. Shall we wait for them to get back? Yeah, back. All right, good. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? I don't want to waste your time here. Uh, Gates, why don't you run you. along? Thank you. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, we are very close, Gates and I. As a matter of fact, I am her son's godfather. Isn't that right? I don't have a son. Ah. He's 47 years old today. I want to wish him a happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's uh, true. He is the godfather of my child. I am? I've made a few mistakes and that, you know, what can you do? I did my best, all right? And I have guided him <laughs> religiously. Isn't that what it's supposed to be, right? That is. That's supposed to be that. <laughs> that's what God parenting is supposed to be. That's you are right. their religious guide yes. or, or whatever. And, and I remember very much. <laughs> I remember that day very well. I do too. All I can say is oi. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, have we had enough of this? Uh, Shall we ask some, uh, some questions? Yeah. We do? You know, we do that sort of Shatner esque thing of. <laughs> Uh, you ask a question, and then we do 30 minutes. Uh, so we've got time for one or two questions, I think. And then uh, we're out of here. Uh, no, uh, shall we, let's start with questions. We have one person who, who wants to know something. So um, after all of these years, how, what really sticks with you at this point from your time on the show? I think oatmeal, right? It's... Uh, <laughs> Oh, for the show. I didn't hear that part. I'm sorry. Um, you want to go ahead? No, you go ahead. Very little, actually. Uh, <laughs> I remember my character's name. Uh, they had a cat, I think. Uh, yes, a redhead cat, yes. It had, it had two, actually. Yeah. Uh, one male, one, one I female. I directed one of them, so I know this. Yeah. Do you remember that, the male and the female? <laughs> Okay. Uh, I remember. I also know how to turn you on, so let's not go there. That's true. <laughs> I think I could probably turn you on, too, if I had to, but I... You know, I, we can... You know what? Uh, believe it or not, speaking of the moment of turning, turning me on, uh, that's a euphemism, by the way, for... Um, something. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm getting a phone call right now, and I'm, whatever it is, I'm going to, I mean, a uh, email, I'm going to read it to you. Uh, it says, uh, my son Kevin recently graduated from the international uh, something program at Landa Lakes High School in Florida. As part of the community reach, uh, this is the kind they of interesting stuff of I get. Here, okay? All right, never mind. Yeah, no, uh, so, uh, so basically, nothing stuck for him, right? No, I, no. I want to tell him about one moment that stuck with me because she brought it up. The the uh, turning, on. turning me on moment. So I'm going to illustrate this, but not not a lot. Uh, maybe we better 
Well, uh, <laughs> Well, we had this episode, I don't remember the name of the episode, I'm sure you do. Uh, <laughs> perhaps you could remind me. Uh, but Dr. Crusher, played by Gates McFadden, uh, came behind me and pressed a button, I think it was the first time that ever happened on the show, pressed a button to turn me off, uh, which she can do. And um, <laughs> she turned me off, and I fell forward onto a table, like that, the game. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Hermione, if I may call you that. Uh, and uh, so we did the rehearsal. I remember the director was Corey Allen, who directed our pilot too, by the way, called Encounter at Farpoint, exactly. And uh, first rehearsal, Gates comes behind. We figured out where the button's going to be. She pressed it. I fell forward, and I hit my chin on the edge of the table. And you needed a doctor, and there wasn't one around. Exactly. <laughs> knew what they were doing, anyway. Exactly. Uh, but you know that that is the classic place that most people have stitches in their lives, is, is on their, their chin. The mandible bone, I believe it's called. Uh, anyway, they had to rush me to an emergency room in full data makeup. Uh, I went in, they took me in, the doctor sewed it up, uh, went back to the set, we resumed where we left off. The director said to me, do you mind doing it again? So, indeed, Michael Westmore puts a, a patch. He was our makeup artist, and he put a patch of something under to, and made up over it. You can't see it. But you were an android, so you didn't really feel anything anyway, right? Well, I didn't feel it, no. Yeah. But it, uh, I still bleak, right? Well, I thought yeah. that was a special effect. No, that oh, was that real was blood okay. running down my All uniform. Right. Right. Uh, anyway, I still have the scar right here from that day, and I always think of you when I touch it. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Matter of fact, it turns me on. It's, uh, yeah. That's sweet. All right, what do you remember? Enough uh, from me. Um, I remember your cat. I, I, I you know, yes. that was a highlight. That was uh, nice. But actually, I, I, my mind is going more towards the medical. So, oh, I remember the day that I put all those stickers on your trailer and that pissed you off. <laughs> I don't remember that. So little, like Hello Kitty things. Somebody, oh, yeah. somebody had sent me a lot of Hello Kitty things and I thought kind of, you know, whatever. Yes. He had a cat. It seemed, it seemed good. Uh, no, I kind of remember when um, your godson, my child, yes. uh, really, he would, he kind of grew up around the set and I remember just times where it would be, I'd go, this is your Godfather, and he'd look at this person in with yellow eyes, <laughs> and you know Chartreuse face, and then and scream. Um, he would scream, like and, uncontrollably. And I remember, <sighs> and he sort of was yeah. salivating on the uniform, which meant you had to go get repowdered. And then that's right. He didn't even know who Michael Dorn was after when he saw Michael Dorn after years. I think he, he was like he didn't know who he was because he thought it was Worf, and right. he didn't make that connection. So there were a lot of things like that that I really remember in terms of Star Trek, because my son literally was a baby, and you know his first three years were on the set, and he loved the, he learned to walk on the, um, what did we call it, where we... The, you, the, the, the transporter pad? Yeah, no, 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 where did you drive, oh, you oh, drove the, the, the uh, you know, the thing, the horseshoe thing. The horseshoe, the... Uh, the, the, the engine uh, room where we all were driving. What? The bridge. Thank you. And we were on, what was, what was we, we were in a, a, a ship, right? Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, I, that, it's coming back to me, but I do remember my son learning to walk on the bridge, and uh, he loved the fish in the uh, ready room. Liked that a lot. Anyway. You know, uh, speaking of, of being in a ship, and this is really true, that we worked so many hours on the show. We would do between 16 and 20 hours almost every day. And... Uh, so I had very little time to do anything else, and I didn't watch the show much, but occasionally I would turn it on, and when I would see the ship go by, I thought I was in it. Yeah. That's... No, it's true, it was so cool, but, but then when you would go like on vacation, 
and you just lay down like I remember being somewhere and I looked up and there were the stars and it was like oh I'm like at work you know it was yeah. like it looked like it it looked like the backdrop that we had the star field and it was just so but exactly nobody's filming this are they oh good oh no no uh, this isn't going to be on YouTube is it oh good uh, Another, that was 30 minutes, I think, for that question. Uh, yeah. Can we move on? Yes, sir. How you doing? Hi, Brent. Hi, Gates. Hi. Hi. Uh, uh, this message is actually for Gates. Oh, well, well you know. Go ahead. <laughs> I understand. First of all, I liked you uh, when you played a judge in Franklin and Bash. Oh, thank you very much. That was much. cool. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was my friend, uh, Jason Ensler, who, uh, he's a longtime friend of mine, and he just said, hey, you want to do an episode? And I said, yeah. Uh, so it was fun. They are very funny guys, those guys. I'll tell you. They really are funny. Yeah. Can you please tell the story behind your name? Oh, that's not so terribly interesting. I mean, it was a... My mother's side of the family came from Lithuania, and they made them change the name when they got to Ellis Island, and so they went to Gates. And Gates was just in... That was my middle name at birth, and it was a nickname when I was a kid, Gatesy. And so I just decided after being Cheryl Gates McFadden for a long time, I had never really felt Cheryl was right for me. I just felt there was something about things, doors opening, closing, Gates, I don't know, something. Airport, I was in the airport a lot. I thought, Gates, that's a good name. And so I just, uh, yeah, and it kind of coincided with the, the Star Trek. So it was also a way of separating some of, the, I had done choreography and I'd done other stuff and I don't know I don't know anyway I, Gates is the name I really prefer Good. and you're also a wonderful song. dancer well thank you thank you very much <laughs> she is a sophomore in high school do you believe that what yes yes she was homeschooled sophomore in, in, you're in, high in your school. 40s how can that I know. be it's uh, well, anyway, I don't mean to embarrass you. I just kept saying, you know, so what college, you know, what right. college are you going to? Yeah. Anyway. She, well, she goes to Starfleet Academy, clearly. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I knew uh, Gates when you were Cheryl, didn't I? He did. I did. We'd known each other long before the series. Yeah. That's part of the problem, you mm -hmm. know, but <laughs> we work it out. I liked you better when you were Cheryl. You know? No, I'm, no, I'm I, kidding. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. I'm, no, I like you better as Gates. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's easy. Uh, <laughs> you have a question? Yes. Brent, I'm very sorry. This is for Gates as well. <laughs> <laughs> no apologies necessary. You can give input. See, the men are always that way. Just anyway. All right. Yes. Yes. You and Patrick Stewart both complained that uh -oh. your characters did not have enough love in their characters' lives. Well, you had each other, and through the series, there was a constant romance between you two. Given your way, how would it have ended during the series? Thank you. You mean that I can actually talk about? Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't know what they teach you in homeschooling, but I have to be careful here. Uh, no. Uh, well, you know, it's true. I, we did start, and I, I... Oh, they're on their knees to us. <laughs> oh, oh, now that's a, new, that's a new thing. I've never seen that. Please. Okay, I feel like I should answer that way, but I just had knee surgery, so... Um, I, you know, I always uh, thought that he was quite wonderful, and... Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. I think the studio wanted to go a different direction because I know that that was the character was I was his love interest, as it were, on the description. But um, he was always in my heart, and uh, we always we wrote each other little notes, you know. And I'd leave them I'd leave them under the Shakespeare book, and uh, and you know, I love you too, Doc. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you mean? <laughs> Data, you mean that was you? Oh my God! No, darling. No. Obviously, you can't hear me. <laughs> um, well, anyway, so, uh, but I did. They did finally give me an episode uh, where I had a love interest other than the captain uh, when I was uh, seven months pregnant. 
for real. I was seven months pregnant, and it was like, oh, I get to have a love interest in this script. I was like out to here, and I'm like, great, okay, that's going to be really sexy. Okay. Uh, anyway. Who was that? I, uh, that was that a guy. Was, uh, that was the, uh, the, the, the trill thingy. He that was, was a, a trill. trill. Was, and that was actually a really cool episode. Yeah. yeah. But the actor, do you remember the actor? Who? Frank Laws. Was it Frank Laws? Oh, yes, Frank. Frank. Oh, Frank's a great guy. I did Little Shop of Horrors with and Frank. And the episode was called The Trill, right? That's what I said, the host. I was just testing. I was testing. And you, good. Very good. Okay. Um, Shall we go here another question? Frank Laws. I did. I, I did. did. I feel, have a feeling this one's yours. I have a feeling. No, not necessarily. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Really, don't it, be ashamed it, if you don't. It's for both of you. Oh. If you have no interest in me whatsoever, <laughs> I completely understand. Okay. You uh, played a lot of dual parts in a lot of episodes, like in episodes where there was where Laura featured, and also um, a Stone. fistful of data. Oh, and Doc, yeah. where you got to play a whole bunch of characters on the holodeck. And I was just wondering, for each of you, which episode was the one that you most enjoyed working on as an actor? Uh, never really enjoyed it as an actor. Uh, <laughs> But uh, as an employee, <laughs> I enjoyed it enormously. <laughs> the entire seven years, by the way. Um, you know what's funny? Uh, I, I don't know how Gates feels about this, but uh, we really did work such long hours for so many days, for so many years, that it, it seems like one long episode to me. It doesn't seem like there were different hours because, you know, you see it, you sit down on the couch, it's 52 minutes or whatever it is with commercials, and then it's over. But we were there for so long doing every you know, scene over and over and over and, and all that that it really does seem like this huge, epic thing that we were a part of. And um, uh, did I answer that? No. I, I actually enjoyed doing the Western a lot because Patrick also directed that one, and it was, it was fun. Um, I really liked doing... Um Anything where there was any comedy for my character, I really liked. Um, and one of the ones that was very funny, even though I was very naughty, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to unzip my jumpsuit. We weren't supposed to have zippers in that century, but I didn't know. But I, I really liked um, she knew. Going, back in the, <laughs> going back in the 40s. I thought that was the big goodbye was really fun for me because I got to do some other things and I got to, you know, ha have a, it was just fun to do trips and to, to well, we had a lot stuff. of those, though, really, that were fun. I mean, yeah. the tap dance, tap dance. the... Uh, that was but, fun, because we actually got to... We kind of, like, cons were able to construct the scene ourselves, and yeah. that was really fun. But, uh, and we got to do Three Musketeers, and we got to do uh, all kinds of but, stuff. But, you know, for me, I really, truthfully, I loved directing Genesis. It wasn't a typical Star Trek script, but I loved the whole process of directing. I got one fan there. But I, I just, you know, when you're looking at these sets for so long, there were so many things that I finally wanted to use. Like, you know, those jars that had been in my sick bay? Since the first pilot, there were those red, blue, th and I was like, I'm going to use those in the episode. Something's coming out of that. You know, it was really, and I really love directing. By the way, I, I'll do a little, you know, plug here. I'm directing Denise Crosby at my theater, at the uh, Outwater Village Theater. Um, I'm artistic director th uh, there. I don't know if you know that, Ensemble Studio Theater. And uh, she's got a fabulous part in a new play that we're doing there. Uh, so anyway, she sends her regards. So anyway, that was my favorite time, was actually the, the episode directing. I really loved it. Hi. Hi. It's for both of you, so you can stay. OK. <laughs> I'll stay then. I think they could like get on their back and then just crawl. <laughs> I think they should row yeah. at this point. It looks like you're the skull team or the they sculling make, team. This, or... this is ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, all right. All right. Okay. And so everyone can say. Um, I, both of you played very, very serious characters, you more than her, but what was your favorite moment to, yes? More what was serious? your favorite moment to, um, that you actually got to goof off a lot on set, on camera? Uh, we goofed off nonstop. Yeah, nonstop. It was it sort was... of the only way to, to deal with it. It was just, if, yeah. in fact, that was one of the things, like for everybody, you, you go on the bridge, if you're trying to do a heavy, serious thing, you better watch out. You better, yeah. you know, 
batten down the... The more serious the scene, yeah, the, the more we goofed off. Yep. And so if you see a really serious, dramatic scene, realize that all the other actors are off stage going... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was one time, remember, this was... God, I forget who directed it, but you remember where someone, one of the directors had us look at the stick, and we were all, and we were all standing in a row, and they were trying having us look at this stick, and so all of our heads were in a row on the bridge going... <laughs> and I mean, we did take after take, and then they couldn't use it. Of course, it was right. like, but it's it ridiculous. was. We, we were just, we couldn't keep uh, from laughing because you just <laughs> felt like an idiot. It was very. But funny. the hardest I ever laughed on the show was, uh, we were doing an episode called Masks. Uh, see, I remember some of them, um, <laughs> and I was playing a lot of different characters. But one of the characters I was playing was uh, I was the goddess of the moon. <laughs> and, <laughs> Uh, Patrick was the god of the sun, and I was the goddess of the moon. And it was the last day of the episode, four o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. We'd gone that long, and I had the mask on, and Patrick was off camera laughing so hard, and I, I, he'd make me laugh, and then we were both laughing, and the crew hated us, because they... <laughs> They wanted to go home so bad, and, and so did we, but we couldn't help ourselves. We looked so stupid, but... Thank you. No. Hello. Bonsoir. Pardon? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Ça va? Ça va? Non. Um, my usual question when I go to the celebrity panel is what was the funniest thing that happened, but since that's already been asked, we still have what was the funniest thing. Oh, you can oh, ask really? us 10 more times. No, go ahead. Uh, well, um, my other question that I usually ask is, um, for the two of you during that show, for each of you, what do you think was the, was there a defining moment where you felt that your ability as an actor was at its peak and it was really reflected? On that show? Yeah. That was, uh, I'm not sure that's... Uh, you're kidding, right? That's, I, 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 do you have an answer to that? Uh, I don't think, I, don't think uh, I really ever reflected on it like that, but I could spend some time thinking about it and get back to you tomorrow. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, I mean, for me, I think maybe, I don't know for you or, or not, but um, I know that there's nothing like, when you're doing live theater, it's like a start to finish performance and there's a whole different type of adrenaline high than when you're doing little s scenes or snippets and then you wait like two months before you see it put together and things like that. So there are moments, but it's a different thing than actually like doing an entire show where you, you have been rehearsing for X number of weeks and you do it start to finish. That to me is where I would say more acting wise, those have been um, my most memorable moments of acting. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Bonsoir. Hey there. Hi. Uh, so this is a question about a movie, right? Um, in Star Trek Generations, you cry yellow tears. Yeah. And from the time I saw that when I was a kid, you know, to now, I wondered how did you cry yellow tears? How did the uh, effects team make that happen? And that kind of also beckons the question, what was it like as stage actors yourselves dealing with so much practical effects, you know, and then digital effects as well uh, throughout the whole experience of the show? I, the yellow tears, I have yellow tears, actually. That uh, was what I thought originally. I thought you just had to pee really bad and they wouldn't let you go to the bathroom. <laughs> that was my answer when I was like 15, though. When I was yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, those costumes did not have zippers in them. Um, <laughs> um, but dealing with digital effects, I guess we learned everything we could possibly learn about dealing with digital effects and things like that, and blue screen, and I actually developed a, uh, a whole uh, school of how to act with, with the blue screen or green screen, whatever you're using. I, I wanted to teach a class in it, uh, but it's a very simple thing. I only had one lesson is you just stare at it, <laughs> and, and that's it, and it, it works. Somehow. And then see red silhouettes for the rest of the day. Well, that's true. So you cry yellow tears then. Right, right. But uh, I think I had a hard time for some reason. It really, well, it wouldn't be a surprise to you, but I really took me longer, I think, than anybody to understand the drill on things. 
like um, I remember for the whole first season, they would put sandbags, and that's when you were supposed to stop, when you would feel the sandbag, and the camera's gonna stop there. And I would be so into it, I would go up the sandbags and go <laughs> to the other side, and I totally, I, because to me, I, I just, it wasn't the concept of that's your mark. I had a real problems with some of the hitting the mark and not making any noise, because everything was plastic. So you'd set, you know, I had all those medical instruments, but if I made any noise, we'd have to redo it, you know, because it would ruin somebody's line. So it's like, you know, you're like trying to put it down, but act like it's a really, you know. The, the silliest thing we had to do was, was when the ship was rocked by yes. a, a photon <laughs> torpedo, you know, and we would all, and they would actually say, and shake. <laughs> and we, yeah. it, it was absurd. Yeah. Uh, we were adults uh, when we were doing this. Yeah, yeah, but that, but those ended up being the fun times. They were fun, I mean, they yeah. were fun. Those were the fun times. The observation lounge, those were long Oh, shoot whenever days. you see us in the wow. observation lounge, yeah. that's when we wanted to yeah. really, everybody like, has a close-up. It's like, oh, oh, my God, we're going to be here for hours. Because you're around a table, there's nothing you can do. you got to shoot everybody around the table. It's, hell! Thank you. Let me just pitch a couple of my uh, projects right now while there's a pause in the action. Uh, I'll be directing Denise Crosby in, no, I'm not, that's, well, I might. Uh, uh, no, has, has anybody seen my web show? Fresh Hell, exactly. Fresh Hell. If you haven't seen it, go on YouTube. There's a, there's a, a dedicated website being designed right now, but go on my website, I mean, go on YouTube for now, and, it's, and type in Fresh Hell series, one word, and it'll take you to the channel. There's five episodes watch all of them. There's 10 more being made this, this year soon, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Other than that, Monday, not Monday night, a week from Monday, watch Alphas, because I'm uh, the guest star on it that week. Thank you. Gatie, oh, no, you, yes, hi. Hello. May I call you Gates? No. <laughs> I don't answer to it. No, Cheryl? <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Uh, my question is for you. Yes? It's, uh, in the filming of the episode Brothers, mm -hmm. what was it like playing three separate roles and having two completely different sets of prosthetic makeup and filming it out of order? Well, I'll tell you, first of all, it, it did afford me the opportunity of working with my favorite actor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, or should I say, actors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, uh, I was going to say my least favorite actor was Spot the Cat, but uh, that's another story. Uh, have you ever acted with a cat? Please. But um, uh, you know what? It was it was a long day uh, every day on Brothers because I had to be in at three o'clock in the morning to start Dr. Sung's makeup. And um, basically, we shot in one direction, and then we shot in another direction, so I would just change clothes and get out of makeup and get into Data's makeup, and it was long. But it was very rewarding, uh, because I, I got to work with one of the grades. <laughs> or, or should I say two of the grades? <laughs> no, no, I, I really enjoyed it, though. That was a really fun episode to do. Rick Berman wrote that episode, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I can see there's a tear. Yeah. Is it there. yellow? No, it's uh, well. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, this is from Rent, uh, but you kind of already beat me to it. I was oh. going to ask you to give us an, uh, your Patrick Stewart impression, uh, impersonation. I don't do that, yeah. darling. I'm sorry. I... <laughs> All right, studio. He works on that down. in his room for I do. hours. Hours and hours I do that. You should hear my gates. Hey, by the way, yeah. I'd love to. Uh, by the way, uh, I was uh, fortunate enough, I don't know if any of you were able to see Patrick's Merchant of Venice um, this summer. It, is, it was fantastic performance. It was, I think, I think maybe my favorite thing I've ever seen Patrick do. He was amazing in it. So if it comes to New York, and I believe it's going to, I do encourage you to uh, make the trip to see it because he does an extraordinary job. Uh, excuse me, Gates, Brent, over here to your left, to your right. Ah bon, oui. That's Sir Patrick.
Patrick Stewart. I believe Stewart. that's right. That's right. That's right. You may call me Sir Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> or Sir Shylock, if you see the show. That's right. How like a fawning publican he looks. I hate him. What do you... But, but he always wants me to just call him Jean-Luc. <laughs> wants me to call him Patty Cakes. <laughs> um, it's an honor to be in front of both of you. You inspired my choice of career. Oh, what but, was that? Uh, acting. I, oh, you're an actor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and a wardrobe tech, because it pays better. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Um, with your diversity and all the different talents, talents that they let you exhibit and all the different character work you got to do. Who was your favorite actor to get to play off of? <sighs> well, Gates, of course. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> uh, on the show, you know, I, I have worked with some astounding actors in my life. Um, uh, everybody on our show was wonderful to work with. We used to love uh, it, it didn't matter what the combination was in a day. I, I'd love looking at the call sheet to see who I was going to work with the next day. And it, it could be one or two or three or everybody, but it was always fun. And, um, but in, in other work, I've, I've had some really wonderful opportunities. Probably, for me, the one that I'll, when I'm in the old actor's home, the one I'm going to be talking about is that I got to work with Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. And, um, thanks. Uh, and out to sea, they were just, just uh, going to work every day was a dream. I, I think I'm going, I'm going to see Jack and Walter and Donald O'Connor and Elaine Stritch and it was just incredible. And do you remember when we even, that night at the Friars Club where we met, um, Sid Caesar and, and, then and Jonathan and Winters, Jonathan. yeah. That was amazing. Awesome. Jonathan amazing. Winters, we were at, amazing. Gates took me, she belonged, do you still belong to the Friars no. Club? No. She used to belong to the Friars Club, which is an actor's club, and, and there was a, 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 not a roast, but a tribute, really. Yeah. I mean, they roasted him, but it was a tribute to Sid Caesar. And all of these great guys, Larry Gelbart, fantastically funny, and, uh, and Jonathan Winters was there, and we went up to him and said hello, and he did 20 minutes. Like I mean, hello sprung 20 minutes of characters and improv. It was fantastic. And, and Milton Berle was there that yeah, night, you remember? I, know. I remember. It was, it was like incredible. It's why, uh, yeah, Ernest Borgnine is here, and, I, and I'm amazed. You know, I'm, yeah. I, 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 I so love his acting. It's er great. When I remember Milton Berle. He was in the audience, and Milton was probably 90 at the time, something like yeah. that. He was smoking a huge cigar uh, and inhaling it. Um, but the, there was a young comedian named Jeff Ross who uh, is brilliant, and he's like the roast king. He produces all the roasts now. But I remember he got up and he said to Sid Caesar, he said, Oh, Sid, he said, this is just a fantastic night. I, I can't believe I'm here. He said, the only thing that would make it better is if Uncle Milty was still alive. And Burl got up and went, you be quiet! It was just incredible. It was a great evening. Anyone want a plate? I'll sign it. Uh, no, no. Could we? Yeah, okay. I don't know what this plate is for. Uh, was somebody eating uh, biscuits? Uh, all right, who's got a pen? Okay, first pen. Um, I, and, and I, you know, just put it on my bill here at the hotel. Okay? What Would is you your question? Let Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> That's about... This is a... Uh, a euphemism, isn't it, of some sort? So, so I was just wondering if either of you had watched uh, any of the other shows, um, whether we're talking the original series or Deep Space Nine or Voyager or the rebooted movie or any of that stuff, 
And if so, which of them you enjoyed? Uh, the stuff movies? that yeah, Star Trek stuff that you weren't in was it any good? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> well, I, actually, I mean, for me, I don't really watch that. I don't watch TV. Uh, Barely. I haven't seen my Franklin and Bash episode. I, I, I haven't, you know. So I don't, after you did that many years of Star Trek, the last thing I personally felt like doing was watching something else about something on a ship that was there. When I first got the job, I had not ever seen an original Star Trek episode. After I got the job, I did not know what warp speed was, okay? After I got the job, I started watching them, and they were very funny. I thought they were wonderful. I loved the first series very much. Uh, very camp and also... I love the themes of Star Trek. I love all the, the writers are amazing on the show, and Gene Roddenberry certainly had his finger on something um, incredible. But I, I just, I love science fiction, but I didn't watch all of the other series, so I have to say that quite honestly. But I do like science fiction, and I've watched it in movies, and I've read science fiction books, and I do love science fiction books. I loved uh, the Ridley Scott Alien, loved that. Um, in fact, that was what I studied a lot when I was gonna direct Genesis. Not that, you know, they were comparable, they weren't, but it was just, I, I loved the way he really created tension. I thought he was so brilliant and the actors were amazing in it. I'm sorry, what was your question? <laughs> that, uh, did we watch the movies? Uh, I oh. was just curious about the original series and Voyager oh. and Deep Space oh. Nine and oh. the new Enterprise and the new movie, like, did, have you watched it? Did you like it? I, I, I saw, probably all of the original series uh, when I was, when it first aired, I think I was three. <laughs> what? I, uh, and no, I watched the whole first series, which I, I loved, and um, I saw the pilot of, of Deep Space Nine and the pilot of Voyager, and I did three episodes of Enterprise, although I didn't see those. Um, I think I saw the pilot for Enterprise, too. Uh, uh, but they were at screenings that they invited us to come to, and so I went. Um, but, it, you know, it, it's, as Gates said, we spent so much time in that world, it really just, there was so much other stuff to see since, you know, we'd already been there. And, and yeah. also, if I, can, if I can say, I was the only one who had a small child at that. I mean, that was a big deal, and I really felt I had, had so many hours at work. I really didn't want to go to some of the, the things that we were invited to and take another evening away from. I really loved being, um, you know, with my child as much as possible. And also I ended up being out of, I was in Hawaii for a while. So it's just hard. I mean, it's, it's a deal. There's some people who love to get dressed up and go to those things. For me, it's a, uh, you know, it's not as thrilling for me that way. But I'm saving all of those Star Trek things for the convalescent home because I'm like really going <laughs> to yeah. just... You know what, I think they were all really quality productions, and certainly yeah. for their time they were. I mean, everything ages, you know, to a degree, unless it's like, you know, uh, Chaplin or something, or Buster Keaton, but, um, but for their time, and I thought they were like superb hour dramas that, that everybody did. There were great casts on every show, and uh, I, I'm, the longer it goes on, the more happy I am to have been a part of it, seriously, because it really is. Star Trek is sort of, I think, the biggest thing that's ever happened in American entertainment. I mean, there's, what else compares? Um, I think, is it, it's like four and a half years from now, it'll be 50 years that there's been Star Trek nonstop available. And, uh, you know, obviously there's, uh, double-edged sword. I mean, it, uh, there's certain silliness that's part of Star Trek, and, and as it should be. But on the other hand, once you hit 50 years, you got to take it seriously, no matter who you are. And, um, and, and that's eminent. And also, I think that's something that, that, for me, when I started, I didn't have any idea. But as I traveled and I met fans and I saw the impact it had, I mean, it really, it opened my eyes to a lot of things. And then there was the time where you go to the museums and they're showing what Star Trek talked about and then you're seeing the real scientific things that have happened out of it. The futurists who have been predicting this that, that Roddenberry was working with. It's really extraordinary and I, I was able to see the launch of um, one of the shuttle mission um, flights and it was life changing. I mean, I, I kept going, wow, you know, 
this is what you're really doing. I'm just pretending to do it every day. And it, it was very, very amazing. And, and when I did a USO tour in, in Bosnia, um, I, there were guys who carried 80 pounds only. You know, they had 80 pounds and they'd have their backpack and they'd have a Star Trek novel. This is like, and I, I really started to see the impact it had had on a lot of people's lives. And uh, um, it was. It's rewarding. It really yeah, is. It, really it, is. it <laughs> makes you really happy that it goes way beyond even what I imagined it was, and which was primarily entertainment. Uh, and hopefully that is primarily what it is. But there are all kinds of offshoots that, that are, are much deeper and, and uh, much more rewarding. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we're done now. Uh, <laughs> no, go ahead. Oddly enough, you just mentioned your tour in Bosnia, and I met you there, and you you promoted me to, to sergeant. All right. Wow. So. That, that, that's amazing. I mean, that really was a very important week in my life. I was very humbled by what um, people like yourself do. Oddly enough, we were quite humbled by your ability to walk in that tent <laughs> after not been not having showers for the first three weeks we've been there. So that was <laughs> it's quite an amazing feat on your part. So wanted to thank you for that. Um, she was saying it was quite an amazing feat on your part too. Uh, <laughs> uh. Let's take our boots off. Yeah, well, well, what, was, like, what was <laughs> amazing on that show is, I, I mean, I, I actually thought it was going to be the whole cast of Star Trek. I thought we were all kind of going on this thing, or that at least it was this other show with a lot of other people. And when I found out it was only me doing these shows, I was like, what am I going to do as a show? So I was terrified because I thought they're going to expect me to, you know, whatever. And I was this middle-aged, uh, you know. What did you do? I, that, I, you know, I, I, I promoted him. I, I promoted him. Oh, to, well. to, <laughs> so it was a big affair, right? You know, it was a lot. It was. Oh. Uh, actually, I'm still in. I'll be retiring shortly. Thank you gotta so have, much. Got to have another player. Thank you. You'll need that, that for... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, so uh, what are you doing now? Uh, actually, I'll be retiring in, a, in another year. Wow. So, yeah, I've been promoted yeah, once maybe, or twice more. Let's retire together. I'm thinking about it, too. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, I guess my question is for Brent, then. Where were you? Ah. <laughs> Bravo. I was... No, seriously, I... I was entertaining the troops in Galveston that weekend <laughs> <laughs> on the beach. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I wish I'd been. That would have been no. great. Are you, you're not stationed. You're not still abroad, are you? Uh, no, I just got back. You just got back. <laughs> oh, you're here now. You're not a hologram. I. <laughs> Sci-fi. You never. I, you know. I think everyone's a hologram now. It's. We do that over there in Iraq too. So. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> I just got back a um, couple months ago. Hmm. So, wow. That's, uh, 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 just want to thank you guys for the USO tours. It really does make a difference for us. So. I bet. I bet. Well, I, keep going, guy. I, you wow. know what? I might promote you again. So. You Would know. you like to be colonel? <laughs> he could be a movie star, couldn't he? He's got it. Yeah. You have it. You've got a good, yeah. It's called putting your life guy, on the line. Yes. Really? Well, that's a tough, uh, tough act to follow. There. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> a very simple question. Mm -hmm. and this is a uh, data question. So something frivolous then. Something, right. something completely frivolous yeah. compared to the last speaker. Yeah. And in an away team mission, let's say two away teams are compared against each other. Data versus Worf, who wins that fight? And why? <laughs> and I want to know why. Yeah. One has super strength. Both has One super has strength. a big head. It's... I could argue that both have super strength, though. I, I think you'd be wrong. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think, uh, oh, you know, he's, <laughs> he's more padded than I am. I'll, I'll give you that. But uh, no, no. 
data. Besides, a lot of those away missions, it, you know, it really took a lot of artistic finesse, and he was much better on the violin. He yeah, was. I was. Fair enough. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Always vote for me. <laughs> Please. All right, first I got to say I love you guys both. I Thank you. I love the crew thing, but of all time, you're actually my favorite character on Star Trek. Thank you. I love you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Coffee afterwards? Why not? All right. Um, my question is actually... Let's make uh, it our own away team, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, because uh, you had a lot of, you had a character that was, couldn't show emotion and everything else. What yes. was one of the difficulties in getting to character before scenes for you? Getting into character? You know what? It was so simple, really. It, was. it really was, because <clears throat> I didn't have to do anything, you know? I just had to show up. Uh, the most difficult thing was waking up in the morning. Yeah, yeah, so tired. And, uh, well, I actually had to be there before anybody else to get into my, my makeup. But honestly, Data was sort of a, 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 what a wonderful character to play because I had this sort of symbiotic relationship with the audience, which was basically, uh, I would say, I do not feel anything. And then I would just stand there and the audience would paint the feelings on me themselves. I would get all of these letters from people going, that scene, I could, I could tell you were really feeling something. And I would go, thank you very much. I enjoy your work enormously. And so that was really, it was nice. It wasn't, uh, you know, I had a lot of lines to learn. That was the most difficult part, was learning just pages of things that didn't mean anything, you know? Yeah. Hey. Uh, thanks for coming out to see me, by the way. Oh, Appreciate delighted. <laughs> delighted. Any time, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, you guys both have played these iconic characters that a generation worldwide knows. Has that really stunted you in doing other acting work? Have you found an opportunity to break away from that? Or has that just preceded you in every audition that you've gone to? And maybe even held you up a bit? I think it precedes us even before the audition. Uh, we don't get the audition because it's preceded us. Um, no, I think it has had, I think there is a, um, there's something about playing iconic characters that, and, and one doesn't plan for that, you know, it just sort of happens. But I, I do think it, it becomes an obstacle more than a help in terms of doing other work. And you have to sort of overcome that and convince people that you can do other things. And yeah. Um, I, I think yes and no. I don't really know for me personally if, if I have felt that enormously just because I also, when, um, when I stopped Star Trek, I, I was immediately into another series. <clears throat> and um, this, the reason I took that series was I was only going to have to shoot two days a week and I could spend time with my um, family. So I think that... I started to be able to do other things, and Star Trek allowed me to do other things that I'd always wanted to do, and um, that have things that have led me to exactly what I'm doing today, which is really something that is a passion, and it's something I'm very happy doing, uh, which is developing new plays, uh, new ideas. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it, it, it would have had it happened in a different way, but for me, I was like so ready to spend. Um, time not maybe going out on auditions and everything. Now that's not to say if someone had offered me some incredible parts, of course that would have been great. Nobody was doing that. But uh, it's fun to do stuff. I like to do it when a friend says, hey, you want to do an episode of this? It's really fun. Do I like going up and slogging to go to, someone says, go, go for this audition, go for this audition. You have so little control in your life as an actor that that's something that actually I didn't love. I don't like, I, I, that's why sometimes I like theater a lot because you have a little bit more control of the performance when it's you, the you know, curtain goes up and you get a satisfaction out of it. It's, uh, so that's, but that's personal. Um, you know, and also I, like, I loved um, Brent when he did Man of La Mancha. I don't know if any of you got to see that. He was incredible in that. I, I, I mean, he, he was, he was great. And, you know, and, and uh, that's something that, is different from doing just an episode or something. Totally. Like, you know. Yeah. Well, you rehearse for a few weeks, and then you, you know, you're on your own. But but you have a relationship with the audience. By the time we make go through that journey with you, it's really yeah. a different thing. And 
you feel that when you do a movie, but there's there's a lot of distance when. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's all fun, but that's a different kind of fun. You know. I just you, think that a lot of people here would like to see you guys it's the spectrum of what you can do, as opposed to the pigeonhole that the icon has put you in. Well, does uh, anybody here produce? Uh, <laughs> Feature films or uh, Broadway, network television? Uh, you? Not yet. Oh, okay. Get on it, man. Right. Thank you very much. We're dying here. Also, Get on it. You know, believe it or not, there's a lot of young people who I talk to who have never seen Star Trek, and and you know, like we'll be, I'll be talking to them at the theater or something, and they have no idea that I was on Star Trek or what. They've never watched an episode. So it it, it pigeonholes in a certain group, but it doesn't in another group. So it just depends on what you want to do. Thank you again. Have a good night. Sure. Thank you. One more? How many more do we have there? One, one, two, three, four, five. We can do five really fast. We're not going to take a lot of time. Um, hi. I just hi. wanted to say you guys have been a really huge inspiration to me and I just, you guys are the rock stars of sci-fi. Oh, thank you so much. I, you're too kind. I, thank you. I'm, I'm delighted the, to be here. And the fans, <laughs> the fans make it happen. So thank, thanks to you as no well. No kidding, really. really. You, you guys make it happen. Um, I wanted to ask that um, so far at Dragon Con, what has been your strangest fan experience at Dragon Con? Sure. Yeah, you, you probably. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> delighted. <laughs> okay, rock and roll. Let's go. I loved you in uh, 1776. Oh, thank you. you. Very great. That was a lot of fun. I think you should have gotten to it. Well, probably should have, but... Yeah. Um, <laughs> will you be um, coming back in the near future for... Um, to Broadway? Musical theater? Yeah. yeah. Broadway. Well, I'm looking at... I actually had a meeting last week with a couple of people who are producing some shows, probably not next year, but maybe the year after, and hopefully one of them will happen, because I'd love to. I'm dying to get back to New York. Yeah. I'll definitely come. Thanks so much. I'll look for you. You're, you have a tattoo, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a question for Gates. One of the stories that Patrick Stewart likes to tell during one of the episodes is the direction he was given. And he's supposed to, you're lying down, he's supposed to reach in and grab you and pull you back. And he says that during that time you reached in and he basically felt you up and pulled you. And do you remember that? I mean, is that something you. They were all memorable. <laughs> <laughs> All those moments, yes, are very memorable. Okay, so you don't actually remember him doing that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you what I remember more is the, the night that uh, the limo picked up Brent and me, and we were going to the, uh, it was honoring Gene Roddenberry, right? Yes. And uh, I had had uh, someone in the costume department uh, said, you know, uh, well, let's do a dress together. Let's do a dress. Okay, so we did this dress, and it had all these uh, little hooks and eyes, like about 100 of them, okay? They went down here. So it's the night of the thing, and I didn't get to try it on with them. She said, I think it'll be fine. And um, I'm ready, and you, I was going to meet you at your house, right? You two were over there, and I was coming Me and down. Jonathan. Yeah, and as yeah. I bend down to say goodnight to my son, the whole dress comes open. Okay, so I'm like, oh, boy. So I get there, and again, I had just sort of gotten it closed up, and they come, and we get in the limo, and it, it, it doesn't stay closed, okay? And so I'm like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? There's a lot of press. It, it just literally... And so both of them, I, are, are, I don't know who was on down here and who was one up here. One of us did the top, one yeah. did the bottom. And they and were, we were doing, so we are in the limo and they are over me <laughs> and they're pressing these things and I'm going, oh, yeah, oh, uh, and there's two guys on me, right? And, and I looked up and I saw the limo driver and I was like, I don't, I was like, oh my God. Like, uh, all right. And, and uh, so, yeah. And he was, was enjoying it much more than she was. Yeah. At that <laughs> Two more, and we got a book. Hi. Uh, hey. Sorry, this is a real downer after that funny answer you gave. Um, back in sort of uh, when Next Gen was on, there wasn't that many female role models, certainly in England, um, for some of my age. So thank you. You were a real role model. Um, and it was that is a downer. Yeah. The, that, yeah. Well, that, 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 yeah. the next bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but certainly in England, like sci-fi gave us female role models and still do. Um, what was frustrating, though, for me, certainly, was when the movies came out, as much as I enjoyed them, I felt that the female characters kind of were 
diminished slightly. I just wonder what you felt about that, really. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, and it was disappointing. Yeah. It really was. I felt that it suddenly was no longer the ensemble. Yeah. And, uh, it, but, you know, I mean, I was glad that the franchise was going on and for everybody. But, yeah, it was, it, it was disappointing. Yeah. That, yeah. Nothing you could do about it, then. Not really. No, <laughs> yeah. no. Okay, thank you. The last question. The last question. <clears throat> No and pressure. No pressure whatsoever. And to actually give you guys a chance to literally end this on a high note, from your musical and dance backgrounds, if you guys produced Star Trek the Musical, what would the 10 o'clock number be? Hmm. Well, obviously Data would be Nathan Lane, right? Uh, so... Uh, well, I could definitely see a whole number where I'm going, you know, turn him off, turn him <laughs> off, you know. There could be something there, and he's turned me on, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. That's a yeah, great that's question. That's a great idea. I have no answer, but... It's a great idea. Do you mind if we sell that? <laughs> no, thank you. Feel free to pitch. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, thank you, everybody. for being here.